Welcome back, Russell family. It's your girl Leah, and I have baby Kaden right along with me. And this video is going to be about how Kaden came into our lives. Now, baby Kaden's been here since December 29, 2021, and he's just been such a blessing to have into our lives, and I love him so much. Let's start back way back when, back in February of 2021. And um, so February 2021, me and Marquisan decided that we wanted to have another baby. Of course, we talked about it before, but it wasn't really kind of on the table due to our financial issues. Um, it was just finding that decent job to, you know, pay the bills and just be on track and be able to splurge. So February came around, we still had our jobs, we still was making enough money, not having to ask for money, and we felt like we were in a pretty good position to bring another child into our lives. Now, they are five years apart from each other, Sky and Caden's five years apart from each other, so I feel like if we waited any longer, then, you know, it just want to be fair, you know, to ourselves and to our children, because I wanted them to be as close as possible, and I think five years is a good amount of distance. So back in February, we decided we had a baby, wanted to have a baby, so we started trying. And April comes around, and what do you know? I found out that I was pregnant. Of course, I told my sister first. How you feel? <laughs> um, told my sister Kayla. Marquise overheard the conversation because he was just right in the next room. The bathroom is like right next to each other, type of thing. So Kayla came in the bathroom, you know, and I was just so excited, and I tried to hide it from Marquise because I wanted to tell him you know in a different way and Marquisan he's just not a type of person you surprise because he already know you know and so I felt like I couldn't tell him in that special way anymore so I told my family um not in a special way but I just you know let my family know um even let my brother know from all the way in Texas and his wife and it was just, you know, just amazing experience. I was so happy and it was so different, you know, cause with Sky, I was so scared, you know, because yes, with Sky we tried, but I didn't think it was going to happen, but it did. We found out that we were pregnant. We have to wait, of course, to do a gender reveal. So we did a gender reveal. All right, yeah, you and the baby. Baby. Oh, it better be a boy, that's all I know. A boy or a girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ah! he was a boy we were hoping for a boy rooting for a boy got our boy and that just made it even more special because we wanted a boy and so i want to say speed on up my pregnancy was horrible. how you feel <laughs> As in, I had hemorrhoids, just had pain when I was walking. Um, I was working all the way up until I think I was like four months. And then I stopped working because, first of all, I was falling asleep in a car. We had an hour break and I would be asleep and never go back in. And I was always tired because I worked mornings on top of that and it was eight hour shifts. And I couldn't do it anymore, so I started doing DoorDash. And then Marquisa ended up following, so we ended up doing DoorDash together. Now, this leads us back to our financial part. Now, if I would have stayed at my job just like two months, I think, longer, then I would have had my maternity leave pay. And I didn't stick it out. I could not stick it out. I even asked them to remove me from the position I was working to another position where, you know, it wasn't so slow and I wasn't standing all the time, but they didn't want to, you know, do that for me, which that was a big issue in itself so i just decided no nah, i'm just going to do doordash and me and marquise did doordash together and we was making so much money on doordash and was able to you know buy everything katie needed and of course it was temporary because we stopped doing doordash so fast forward um you know doctor appointments is going okay until they said baby kaden <laughs> baby kaden is measuring 
um, a little bit underweight and your water is low. Also, so the amniotic fluid that's around the baby was getting low. And I'm telling you guys that I had this so much pain and so much pressure. He was already head down at 21 weeks and it was ugh, horrible. And so they checked it a week later. They said it was fine. Everything was fine with him. So fast forward, um, I was one week or a few days away from my due date. My doctor was like, well, you know, he turned back around. You're not dilating. It just got me discouraged, you know, because I was like in so much pain at this point and I was put on bread wrist. So, Caden had, um, I didn't want to wait that long. I didn't want to wait two weeks after my due date to happen. So, I dropped her as a doctor. Oh my gosh, I dropped my doctor before, two weeks before I was going to happen, or a week before I was going to happen. And so, December 29th, 2021, I was like, Mark Houston. You know, because I had a couple scares here and there. So, I was like, Mark Houston let's go to the hospital let's go to DuPont Hospital I was messing with Parky at the time so I said let's go to DuPont Hospital and just see what they're going to say I'm just going to go in there and say I didn't have a doctor in the second third so I did that I went in there and I told them hey I don't have a doctor you know I haven't got medical care since you know I was seeing this other doctor so I was seeing the doctor do DuPont before I went to Parkview <sighs> that whole situation is I just didn't think the DuPont lady that I was seeing I just didn't you know, I didn't feel a connection with her. And I feel like you have to have a connection with your doctor. And the connection with her just was not there at all. And so when we went into DuPont, I met this nice um this nice man. He was a younger guy. And he was like, well, you already had your due date. And we can induce you today. Or we can induce you on Friday. Um, or we can schedule you for a C-section. Now, I had a C-section with Baby Sky, and it was unexpected. It was an unexpected C-section. I was so scared. I had a seizure right before I had a Sky. My heartbeat drops, everything. It was just so scary. Anything? Just below the breast line down. Just below the breast line up, you will feel movement, okay? So I move your leg, you feel movement. And you know that I'm moving something down here, but you, you have to. Um, but with Caden, I'm like, okay, well, I have these episodes. I have my seizure episodes. And if my body is in so much stress, what if I just had a seizure? And, you know, they just going to cut me open anyway, because if you have a seizure, of course, you know, your body's in so much stress. The baby's going to get in so much stress. And I can't push you know if I'm in my seizure I can't push what if I'm in the middle of pushing it was just so many what if so I was like okay I'll do a c-section I'll do a c-section for this afternoon he said okay so when I tell you guys it was like that it was like that it was so bad to be honest I don't know it's just like it's just weird it's surreal becoming a father again it's like big place it's a big place Oh, Are y'all good now that you're moving you that much? Mm. You know, my daughter came out way here than you, huh? Fairly. <laughs> Kaden, I think he was like everything was fine his heart rate and everything was fine so that's why they said it was okay but when I tell y'all I was had so much anxiety I had my friend that was also pregnant text me talking about it's gonna be okay you just gotta calm down you know my mom was like wow they about to do it I'm like yeah mom they about to do it so you know everybody was like dang like I didn't expect you about to you know have the baby today so I went to sleep. I think I slept for at least an hour before they came and started bothering me to wipe me all down and just prep me for the surgery that I was about to have. 
and when I say everything just went fast but that nap helped me taking just letting my body rest you know your body is the most relaxed when you're asleep so just by me relaxing and falling asleep helped me so much and when it was time to get into that operating room I was wide awake I didn't go to sleep and I wasn't drowsy or anything like that and baby Kaden came out now the doctor was like he's not trying to come out and I'm like what you mean he's not trying to come out this boy like the doctor's pulling him he's literally like I feel it like I feel the tug of war so Kaden literally ran back in me like guys he ran back in me he was he was not ready he was not ready to come out but physically he was ready to come out I got a chance to spend time with Kaden all day and all night but remind you when you have a c-section you're literally still like the amnesia is still trying to wear off so i still had that epidural in my back we'll try to have the epidural wear off so when it finally wore off and i started feeling everything this doctor only had me on ibuprofen that's all this doctor put me on so i'm like dude i feel i feel it i feel everything and she was like well it's time to take that catheter out i said but you know i'm in so much pain like you want to take it out already it was like oh, like i want to say like three to four hours later because you got to wait for like an hour or two in that room so as soon as they put me in the other room they was like hey it's time to take this catheter out now i didn't want to get up and walk it was like i just felt like that was too soon to take something out so they was like, okay we're gonna leave it in and I'm gonna contact the doctor to see if we can get you on some stronger medicine. I'm like, okay, because I'm not about to let you take something out of me and then I have to walk to the bathroom because that's what they were trying to get me to do, get up. So um, the doctor came back and they put me on some stronger medicine and then I allowed them to take the catheter out of me. Always be your own advocate. Like, if you feel like if something is not right or you in so much pain, demand that stuff because they work for you they work for you you're paying the hospital to do what you need for them to do for you and that's how i see it um yes yes and katie was such a sweetheart he was such a sweetheart um he didn't cry as much in the hospital or anything like that she sent him to the nursery i think we sent him to the nursery once just for me to be able to sleep because he had like one period of time where he was just crying and my night nurse was so sweet she was so sweet she would um you know hold him while get in the right position or just you know take time to wake all the way up because i was so tired of the drugs that they had gave me and um and um so baby kaden um weighed i want to say six pounds and nine ounces and he I don't know the time he was born I want to say he was born like at like 4 something or something. it was like a weird number so I, I remember exactly what time Sky was born it was, she was born at you know 1130 but with Kaden I really just don't remember um, it's on his paper I can look at it I'm not saying that it's okay to you know go against your doctor wishes because at the end of the day you chose that doctor for a reason but I felt like she was wait, make me wait the two weeks for her schedule because she started getting booked up like I was not seeing her as often anymore because her patients started having babies weeks was just for her and to fit her schedule because I felt like you know I was healthy enough and maybe something enough to go ahead and induce me a little bit earlier but she didn't want to and that was fine you know but i felt as though that it was time for him to come out i was in so much pain there was nothing that she could do to help me you know this amount of pain that i was in but it baby came in out of me if that's right so i started breastfeeding right away and he had bottles um he had other people breast milk inside of the hospital didn't you so he was strictly breastfed and when I go home I tried my best to stay with you know feeding him breast milk I just wasn't producing enough and we have a program called WIC and I'll call the hotline and they would just encourage me to keep going and keep going now I did it I want to say until he's about two months 
then I start having problems. Um, I started swelling up in different places, in different areas, and I can insert some pictures. So I got put on medicine that wasn't okay to get the baby through my breast milk. So unfortunately I had to stop breastfeeding and that got me into this predicament with the shortage of breast milk. Caden has a very sensitive stomach. So when we started giving him, you know, regular formula, he started throwing it up out his nose, his mouth, like so far. And he wasn't keeping anything down. The doctor switched us over to AR and that helped tremendously. And now that, you know, AR is just not on the shelves right now, we've made our own AR, just added rice. That's all it is, is AR just sounds, it's just for added rice. So we did that for him and he's been doing good. Um, Kaden is now seven months. So this was all seven months ago. Ain't that right, Fat Fat? So that was seven months ago, seven months ago. <laughs> It was seven months ago and he's already getting so big and he's about to be one years old. You're going to be one years old. Come on. Oh, update on baby Caden. Fast forward all the way to now. Baby Caden is sitting up all on his own. He's still in that army crawl, which, but he's like getting up on his knees. So I feel like he's getting ready to crawl regularly. He likes to stand. He likes to stand. This when he get his happiest when so he's standing. And he he feel like he's on a mission. Like he always have to do something or go somewhere or touch something. And he stand. And he. What else? He's on solid food, um, so he just has like not really. I don't. I don't know why they call that solid food, but I guess he get fed baby food. Baby Caden's not in daycare. Um, I watch Caden during the day, so by like six o'clock I go to work, and I only work four hours, which sucks. He's too little to be in daycare. He's too little. I don't feel like nobody would treat him the way I treat him, and that's why I don't want him in there. And Sky, she's old enough to tell me what's going on. There's be a, it was a few times where I have to go up to her daycare because they were switching out food. They was giving her someone else's food that wasn't warming up her food, and they don't provide. Food. They don't provide food. They don't provide snacks because all the parents will have to bring snacks in for the kids every so often. And I feel like if you get help from the government, why are you not providing some type of food? Like, even when they have ice cream day, have to bring money. Like, I feel like that's a little bit ridiculous, but okay. But, so, I'm just not ready for him to be in daycare just yet. Not yet. Maybe when he turns one. Head is the type of person that likes to get held. He loves bath time. He loves story time. What else you like? Open wide, please. Just as I suspected. Oh, we need honey. Enough of this infernal folderol. Look, the thing to do is we write a notice promising a large something to anyone who finds a replacement. He's just looking outside, but I honestly think he poo poo. Did you poo? Oh, he had a bad poopy. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And if you love this content, please subscribe to our channel to have our channel just grow and grow our family. Say like, comment, and share. And we will see you next.